Hey, hello YouTube! Greetings from the Lazy Eyebrow to a less than positive video. Usually I'm all about the positive about figures and try and look past some of the issues I see on figures, especially if it's something relatively minor. But it's gotten to a point where I feel like it's a whole video justified about what's been going on. I like Earthrise as a concept. I like the designs they've been doing. I love what they've been getting in terms of looks, like little mini masterpiece figures. It's great. They look great. They look great. They look great. And that's my issue. And excuse this little device. I'm using it to kind of move along my cliff notes so I don't lose my spot. I have no idea how much current global issues play into this, what I'm about to talk about. I'm just gonna start with that. Because for all I know, everything could be the result of that, as when Earthrise started, these issues weren't nearly as bad. Like maybe some factories were short staff. They still needed to hit a quota and just rushed it. I have no clue. But I'm throwing out there as a possibility because, man, I have never seen such a wealth of quality control issues in my life. And some of this you can't blame on global conditions, as these figures were completed, shipped, put on store shelves, and purchased before everything shut down. First off, a disclaimer, if any of these following problems have not happened to you, please, for the love of all that is good, do not run to the comments and say, well, I'm kind of rough with mine, and it's never broken. Maybe you just weren't being gentle. Because whenever I post an issue I have, that's the first thing a good chunk of people say. And like, I'm the first one to say when I screwed up and then I broke it. Whenever that happens, I'm usually, I'm pretty honest about that kind of stuff. And to get people from all over with surface level context show up and say, didn't happen to me, this is an isolated case that you broke. It's kind of like, how's the weather on planet you? Sounds lovely this time of year. All right, gonna go through every figure that I know of has problems. I reached out to the subscriber community in multiple various forums and asked what the problems they had were with each figure. So here we go. Why Earthrise has been kind of trash. Wave 1. Wave 1 came with four deluxes, two Voyagers, and two leaders. This is the wave I feel had the least amount of issues, but there were still issues. Let's not downplay this. This also makes me wonder if global conditions kind of played a factor into what came later. Anyways, Wheeljack. Wheeljack came in this gross off-white. I personally didn't like it. Paint apps otherwise were also these muted colors. This is personal preference, but I really didn't like this. Like, at all. Some mentioned they digged it as he was a rally car, so it gave off this dirty, I've been out driving kind of vibe. That's fine. What's not fine is that these windshield pieces cracked for a lot of people. Just fell right off. Some people after multiple uses, some people with a first use, and that was the biggest issue I heard from a lot of people. Some mentioned there was too much paint on some of these areas, and you needed to tear apart and sand things down to get the head on wheel jack or exhaust to properly fit, or the arms to work in vehicle mode. Cliff Jumper. This was an unexpected surprise to me, but it ended up being my favorite figure of the mold. I have two of them, as well as Bug Bite. And in the mail I'll also have Hubcap soon. Issues though? A few had their cardboard backpack completely fall off while breathing on it because the peg that holds it in isn't completely done right. Some people had issues with the parts forming. This guy has a crack in his door and leaves his one in vehicle mode. And that's just Cliff Jumper. My Bug Bite's arm just falls off if you try and rotate it. Some people had their Bug Bite show up without the trunk entirely, and Hasbro physically could not help them as they had none to replace with. Hoist! Quite a few messaged me with videos about how flippy floppy his joints were. Some people messaged about how broken panels they have here and there. There was a paint mismatch on the hood as the entire thing is cast in clear and then painted to match the rest of the figure. I can sort of forgive that, paint isn't easy to touch up, but you get my point. Grapple was a huge one. The head assembly was going on to vehicle mode has two pegs, one that goes into each foot. A massive amount of people mentioned it at the time, and quite a few people messaged me today that the pegs just sheared off. No warning, no stress marks giving any indication it was about to happen, just <laughs> gonna transform it one day and gone. Preemptively, the recommendation is to sand down the pegs so that it doesn't happen, but like, good grief, this just isn't something I expect with opaque plastic. Starscream, oh man, the wings on Starscream, and it's not just my Starscream. Any number of them all will just have random wing issues. Look at the star screen the wrong way, pff, wing falls off. And this is a hugely common issue. Rodimus Pryle found the fix for this though. Turns out it was just extra flashing that got into the well of the wing when the peg sits in. And just trimming it down will get you where you need to go. And I guess this is an easy enough fix. 
but I also have knees that constantly come apart with no real way to lock it together. And you couple that with really old methods of transformation for these jets with numerous third-party figures have addressed in creative ways, and it's like... Was this just thrown together or something? Like, come on. Optimus. Optimus gets the privilege of being in multiple waves, and I don't really blame them for doing that. I personally feel it's a figure worth doing that for. However, that doesn't stop the problems Emgo had where his shoulders would always catch when he transformed it. Mine doesn't sit flush, and I have yet to figure out why it's doing that. People have reported that their cab won't connect fully to the truck bed, or the legs won't even properly connect at all. That was just wave one. And the majority of these problems, with a few exceptions, were minor inconveniences at best and a little elbow grease you could fix on your own. Wave two is where things really started to dip. Four deluxes. One Voyager, one leader. RC. I despise this mold. When I briefly mentioned it, some people got on my case that I implied that the only way to transform it was to remove that backpack. That's not my point. My point is they literally crumpled up a robot and threw a car on top. Fembots get to deal with this bad enough already, but when it came time to make RC, why bother trying to make any part of a robot a part of the car, right? Goodness, I've seen children's costumes more involved in their transformations than this. As for QVC issues, some have got their lifeline with botched paint jobs, bubbled plastic, missing parts. It's a little outrageous. Alicon. I haven't heard of any issues, I'm going to admit, but the robot arms just hanging off the side like that is a little dumb. That's kind of all I had to say about that one. Swim screen! Oh my goodness, the Datsun brothers. Like to preface this, I love what they've done. Can't wait to review them, but man, they are just frock with issues. Tons of people mentioning that theirs don't line up no matter what they do for car mode. My prowl as well nearly being an issue for this, but I can just barely get it together. A wealth of people showcasing how the roof can break off the tabs of the hinge joint during transformation as they've molded the entire thing in clear plastic. Speaking of clear plastic, what are these legs? Why would you mold entire limb pieces out of clear plastic that has been documented to be brittle and easily broken? And then, no paint to even cover the side of the legs. Like, it looks horrible. I'm waiting for the day when we start hearing about all the broken Datsun legs, and I'm just floored how this is even a thing we're looking at. Side note, I hate these wheels. They look cheap. Like, really cheap. Hoist and Trailbreaker have them too, and it looks even worse on them since the front tires have it, but not the back ones. Sure, you could fix this with a 3D printer, but like, why was it even okay to design it this way in the first place? Since we've covered both pack-ins for figures that aren't even part of the wave that are exclusive to Amazon, let's move on to Rathide. I loved Ratchet. I just got Ironhide and I unboxed it and I was super disappointed. Like, I am so glad I got Ratchet first, as if I got Ironhide first, I don't know if I would have wanted to fix the feet. Ironhide is just such a mess. Like, paint not matching, fine. I get that. It could be hard to do that. But we literally have three different colors going on of red here, and only one of these surfaces is painted. Same thing happened at Blue Streak as well. Head is metallic, body is dark gray, and the hands are light gray as well as the shoulders. Like I said, paint color mismatch is one thing, but now all of a sudden we're throwing in two different colors of plastic? These panels that attach to the leg fall off any time I move them. More so on Ironhide than Ratchet. Multiple people messaged me about the arm joints on Ratchet being so stiff they actually snapped. The windshield was molded with thin translucent plastic because that's a real winner for hinges. And full disclosure on this one, I was using rubbing alcohol to remove the paint to do a proper paint job on both Ratchet and Ironhide because of the paint issues when this joint just crumbled. I get this one's on me, but A, why would you do a joint this way with flimsy translucent plastic and B, Figures I haven't used rubbing alcohol, but they snapped anyway, include Studio Series Clunker B, Masterpiece Bumblebee version 1, and someone sent me this photo of their Ironhide already cracking on the windshield, and they haven't even touched the isopropyl. And that's not even talking about the incomplete re-roll with the feet and the tires. We got Sunstreaker in Wave 3, again with the mismatching of colors in multiple areas, and this guy got two left heels. Huzzah! Run amok and runabout are plagued with clearance issues, some of which don't allow all four tires to sit on the ground. Patriot Prime Review got a generation select Super Megatron with two left treads. This Soundwave and a Centurion drone set came unpainted. Megatron is just siege with a turret shaped gun slapped on it with a worse head. Disappointed! Scorponok was missing his shoulder towers. My Gigawatt doesn't have a straight rear passenger wheel, nor will Mr. Fusion properly peg in. And it's like. Between the massive amount of quality control issues nonsense that is just getting worse and worse, and the figures that come completely wrong, it's getting harder and harder to overlook for the sake of the great stuff they're doing. 
On the flip side, though, Hasbro in the past is really good about this. Still have the box? Call them up. Tell them your issue, and they'll happily replace it for you. No question. Like my Siege Prime that had the broken waist? Told them I'd already painted the thing, that I'd stickered it, and they used it for stop motion. Yep, no worries. Here's a paid shipping label. Send it off, and we'll exchange it for you. That's great if they had the toys, and these days they don't. Half of the issues I mentioned happen to exclusive figures with limited stock. If I called them up right now and said, hey, my ratchet broke, they're gonna tell me that unfortunately they just don't have a Paradron Medics kit in stock. Would you like another set that costs around $60? No, I'd like ratchet. And that issue, sure, we can chalk up to boat sinking or global conditions, sure. But this wouldn't even be this much of an issue if the stuff they were making would just hold up. There's no reason for thin clear plastic hinges or entire pieces designed in clear to be painted over. They're charging 50% more for a toy than they were two years ago while making them 30% smaller and more brittle. Can I fix these issues? Of course I can try. I have modeling skills and a 3D printer, but not everyone has that. So long story short, Earthrise has been on a steady decline. Were there QC issues with Siege? Of course there were. There's QC issues with any line. But this year it's been monumentally frustrating just how bad it's been, as well as some of the design choices they've been making lately that really leaves my head spinning. It's like they design like how I paint. I have good ideas, they have good ideas. We just don't execute them well. So that's all I had to say. Wanted to express all of the negative in one video as it's been kind of mounting and I didn't want to rag too hard the main reviews about each figure until it boiled over in one figure and then you just have that entire review as negative. I just hope this has been educational and you learned something today. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow.